Yeah. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, uh, how's your homework now? Um, um, have you successfully uh, finished the homework now? Just type in one if you, if you uh, think that you got the, the correct solution. Yes, 37 is the correct solution. So just type in one if you think that you got your homework not correctly solved. Okay, so I see three people finished it. Four, great. So how long did it take? Two hours? That's awesome. That's awesome. You must be extremely familiar with priority queue in Java, or at least you, uh, you must you must be uh, familiar with using a new data structure in Java. <clears throat> okay, good. So um, I think I'm just going to present, stop the presentation from my iPad and instead I'm going to come back to my laptop. I want to briefly go over your uh, homework night because I think it's really challenging for most of you guys. And uh, uh, previously I received quite a few emails asking for help. And uh, that's what I expected. So if you, if you have questions and you, you cannot <clears throat> uh, resolve it by yourself and after hours and hours of trial and then just, just let me know so that I can uh, help you to go through it. And this week in my um, uh, office hours, I uh, not this week, actually last, last week, in, in my last week's uh, office hours, <clears throat> I received quite a few emails from us. So, uh, even the best students uh, in my class, uh, I would say it's, it's in the other section that I'm teaching, but I think that that student is really awesome. So and uh, uh, so uh, even that student had a lot of difficult has a lot of difficulty with the <clears throat> with the the prims algorithm. So I'm just going to uh, share my screen from uh, <coughs> my laptop. So can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. So this is the code that he sent to me. So he, um, this is the code he sent to me. And uh, here we can see that in his Prima algorithm, um, he, he pretty much followed the style of the BFS one. So he basically create, creates a key, an array of integers for the keys and an array of integers for the parent for the parent and here he's creating the priority queue and uh, uh, use the n as the, the input parameter for the constructor of the priority queue and uh, then he is uh, using the uh, he used the the uh, well the queue is not empty he called he call the remove function from the queue and etc etc so after this code is i have to say that this code is far from being correct so uh, even though that student is really great, so I'm just going to make a couple of small changes in his code so that now at least it compiles. I'm going to change all the graph one to graph two. And uh, so now at least now you can see that this code compiles, but actually when we execute it, It's going to output a zero over here. So definitely this is not correct. So 
if you remember in our priority queue in our sorry, in our uh the uh in, uh, in our slides uh in the uh, 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 print uh algorithm slides so i'm going to go to the in spanish tree, yes in our print in our print uh, uh so pseudo code what we need to do is that for each node we create an infinity uh we, we associate it with an infinity key and uh, a pi that is nil meaning that uh, it, 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 this node has a nil parent the only exception is for the root for r which has a a a uh, say key that is zero okay so that is what we do in the first of four lines and so here when we are creating the when we are using the when we're creating the um the nodes so so when we're when we're implementing the line from number one to number four, we should not use arrays anymore. So instead, we should use a, we, sh we should we should use some uh, the data structure that I provided for you, and it is called print node. So the print node <coughs> has two parts: an ID and a key. ID is basically telling you what is the ID of the node, and this is the key. So we can forget about the tyrant so far, and also it implements. An interface named comparable. It means that when we're having with this by implementing the comparable uh, interface, the thing is that if you are giving two print nodes, it's able to you are able to use the less than and the larger than uh, operator of them to say whoever is uh, whoever is, is larger and whoever is smaller. So we're basically we basically compare two nodes based on their keys. So which uh, so it will return a negative value if if the current node has a smaller key than the input node called O. Otherwise, it, it's going to return a, a, a positive value. If, if they're exactly the same, then it's going to return zero. So this is what, what we do with this function. So here, basically for each for each node in a graph, we need to create a prim node. We need to create create a prim node. And by using the, the construct of the prim node. So here you can see that the prim node has, has uh, two constructors. One constructor does not have, and this construct does not have any input arguments. Whereas this uh, constructor has two input arguments, which are the ID and the key. So what we need to do in this function is that first we need to implement a line <coughs> one to four. So for each node, in the, uh, in a graph, integer i in a graph, integer i and i is less than this dot n. This dot n means the number of nodes in the graph and i plus plus. So for each of them, so we need to check this. If i equal to r, meaning that we are creating here, it means that we are create we are creating a uh, a node for the root r for the root r. So if it's for the root r, we should give it a key that is according to this line. The line I'm going to annotate over here. According to this line, we're we're going to give it a key that is zero. Okay, so we're going to give a key that is zero. So uh, let's come back to here. Um, why am I going to remove it? So no, it does not let me remove it. Okay, so anyway. Uh, Maybe I can erase it. Undo. Okay, great. So <clears throat> if it's, then we're just going to create a print node. We're just going to create a, a print node. Um, so here we're going to call the import. Import graph dot. Okay, we we need to import that. That's that structure. Here we have print node g equal to new print node. We're going to use that uh, the construct of print node and pass in uh, pass in two uh, say say uh, values. So print node and um, here we give it two values i and the key is zero. So, and otherwise, <clears throat> we give it uh, a infinity key. 
integer dot max value. Okay, so and then we are what we so if, so here we just finish line from line one to line four, but what we want to do one more thing that is line five. So here they ask us to create a priority queue that includes all the nodes of the graph. So he, when we are doing this, I will actually implement in line one to line five. So every time when we create a new print node, we, we should add it into the priority queue. So, so first, so before that, we need to create a priority queue of the type. So, so before that, let's check the API of the priority queue, priority queue Java API. <clears throat> okay. So this is the definition of the, this is the API of priority queue. So you can see that this is priority queue and here we have a bracket and with the E inside it, it means that it, this is a template. So it can hold, so this is actually, priority queue is actually a container that can hold any type of class. Uh, so the, the objects of any class, E, e can be any class, can be an integer, can be a string, can be a primal. So here we want to create a, a prop, priority queue of print nodes of, of print nodes. And so if we look at the um, the so this is the list of of constructors uh, prepared by uh, uh, that is already provided by Java. So the first one, the first constructor does not come with any does not come with, with any say say uh, uh, input arguments. It, it is going to create a priority queue with default initial capacity of 11. Okay, so and then we can use so we can use some other versions of the uh, constructor. Like here, we can specify a, the initial capacity of that. But so since in our example, uh, so we only have a very small number of nodes, so it's like seven or something. So we don't need to we don't seven or eight. We we just we can use the default initial capacity eleven. So and so we basically call the constructor that does not uh, call any other function. So it does not have a, a, a any argument input or argument. So here we're just creating a priority queue. We call it queue with a priority queue and print node. And so okay. So here we just create we just create an, a priority queue named named the capital Q that is initially empty. And every time when we uh, when we create a a, a print node. In this for loop, we just add it into the queue. So if if you look, uh, if let's say, how do we add an element into the queue? So here is the, the function. We have a function named add. It inserts the specified elements into the priority queue. So that is exactly what we want. So we just call uh, the add function of it and pass in the um, uh, so, 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 uh, so I want to do this so here. Um, just defined. Okay, so here in this way, uh, Q stays alive over here. So here we just finish. Uh, so what we do in this for loop is that every time when we create a, a, a prim node, we insert it into the priority queue. And by the end, at the time when we finish the for loop, we will be able to, 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 to create a, a priority queue that includes all the nodes in for the graph. So basically we finish line one to line five. So any questions so far? Do you have, <clears throat> do you have any idea on what I'm talking about? Just type in one if you, can, if you think that you follow me. Okay, great, great. Okay, so then I'm going to continue. So here, while the queue is not empty, we will call the extract the main function of the priority queue. And uh, so, so let's check how do we, let's say which function can help us to tell if the queue is empty or not. So if we go to the API, then we, we will be able to say uh, <laughs> the function named uh, over here called is empty. So which is inherited from the abstract collection uh, so class. So we can check this function. Okay, this function is going to return true if it contain if this, this container contains no elements. Otherwise it will return otherwise it, it will return false. 
So this is what this, what this function does. So we so here to implement line six, we just while the queue is not empty. So what do we do is test while dot is empty. Okay. While the queue is not empty. Okay, so and then we are going to call the extract the mean function over the queue, meaning that we want to ex extract, delete, remove the element with the smallest key. And here you can see that there are two functions that we may be able to use. Uh, <clears throat> so, so the first one is named the peak. So it retrieves but does not remove the head of the, this queue. And and Paul actually remo removes, uh, retrieves and removes the head of the queue. And it will also it will return the elements that we actually we, we, we remove. Remember the head in the head of the queue is always the element with the smallest key. So this is the function that we need to call, and because it's it's going to return us the the print node with the smallest key. So we just say print node u equal to q dot pole. Okay, so. So here with this line, we are able to, this line is equivalent to the extracting mean function. And starting from now, the tricky part comes for each, for each uh, node V that is adjacent to U, if V is inside the Q and uh, WUV is less than the key, okay? So let's, let's implement that, okay? So for each uh, what, uh, node that is, uh, that is uh, adjacent to you. Okay, so to check if if a node is is say say uh, adjacent to you or not, so we basically need to check. We basically need to check the the uh, uh, if in the adjacency matrix, um, the corresponding cell is is one or zero. Uh, if if it's zero or not. If it's zero, it means that there is no edge. Otherwise, it means there is an edge. So, but before that, I want to uh, emphasize something. Okay, so next we have if V belongs to the Q and WV is less than the Q. Okay, this is what we have over here. But can we just exchange the order of these two statements? So we just exchange the the uh, these two things. Okay, what well, what we do is that. For each v that is inside the queue, and if this v is adjacent to you, and wv is less than v dot key, can we do it in that way? Are they going to be the same? Is the are the logic going to, is the, the logic going to, to be the same? The answer is yes. We can exchange that. So I'm so now I'm going to exchange. There's two conditions. I'm going to start with for each V that is that is inside the queue. And if that V is adjacent to U and WV is, is less than the key. So I'm going to, to do it in that way, okay? Yes, so yes, the logic is, is, is exactly the same. So the result will be uh, the same. Okay, so then I'm going to clear all short, okay? And uh, <clears throat> so, um, so, so here we, we want to go through every element inside the uh, inside of priority queue. And here, it's not like an array. We cannot go through a priority queue by following by four integer i, i is less than, key, uh, than the, the size of the, of the queue and i plus plus. We cannot do it in that way. Instead, we can use the iterator. So I don't have time to go through the details of iterator, but instead, I'm just going to show you the standard way of using an iterator to go through a, a, a data structure. So, so we, this what this function does is that it returns an iterator over an element of this queue. This iterator does not return the element in any particular order. So basically, and here if you go check the iterator function, you can see the iterator class. You can see that it has three functions. So three functions. The first one is called has next. Basically, it will return true if this iteration, if the iteration has more elements. And, it, and the, the next one is called the next. It will return the element in the next iteration. So this is the standard way of using a, I'm going to show you the standard way of using an iterator. So first we have iterator uh, print node. 
it, and uh, it's going to be a q dot iterator. And while it dot has next, meaning that while there is one more element, and then we are going to have this frame node v equal to it dot next. Okay, this is the standard way of iterating through a that structure or collection by using <coughs> by using the iterator. So the uh, the next one is like I plus um, plus. This next function is like I plus plus. We we increase the we move the the cursor or the iterator to the next place. And so here we got the so so basically with this we 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 just finished we just finished. Is, it is equivalent for each for each v that is inside the, the queue, okay? And then next we are going to check if if say say v is adjacent to u. So the way for us to check if that is adjacent to u is to to, to, to this, okay? If is we are going to have two conditions. I'm going to first write write down the first condition, okay? So if a u dot id and v dot id is not zero okay so so basically we're getting the id of these two nodes because u and v are just nodes are just prim nodes and inside each prim node we have two fields the id and the key so which we're just obtaining their id and check if there is an edge between them by using the uh the input uh, uh graph a mm -hmm. by, by using the adjacency matrix a Okay, and the, the next condition is this if uh, wv is less than v dot key, and this is really simple. So, and so if we are just comparing v dot key, uh, wv is less than v dot key. So, wv is basically a u id v dot id is less than. Okay, if this is less than that, if it, if it is less than that, according to According to uh, so so we then we are going to execute the next two lines. Basically, we're going to set the parent of u, and then we're going to say uh, say say use the, the key to go over it. So we are going to use uh, so we are going to 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 revise the key. But the problem is that okay, when we are going through a collection, we are going to going through through the elements in the in a collection. We are not allowed to change its value. Okay, so so if you read the documents of if you read the API of Priority Queue, you will be able to find find that. Uh, so so um, so um, uh, so uh, we we cannot read while modifying the uh, the, the, the value inside. It. So instead, we uh, so we cannot directly. So here we cannot directly uh, change the the the. Um, the key of reduce the key of of v by saying okay I'm going to reduce the key of v but with this if you do it in this way it will give you an error okay so here if we do it in this way I'm just going to delete all of this code so far and here this is the the weight total weight he wants to to get so initially set total weight equal to zero integer to total weight is zero. The, the total weight of the of the um, of the minimal spanning tree is zero. We set it at zero. And every time when we when we pull the a, a node, so we, we add it with the, the key of that node. So so this code seems correctly. So if we just do it in this way, we can execute the code and see the result. We will say an error. Oh so sorry. This is not an error, but the result is definitely not going to be correct because we are we shouldn't read a prior queue while modifying the value inside it. So instead, what we should do is this. Um, so what we should do is this. We what we should do is that uh, right over here. We're going to create a copy of the queue. So create a print, oh, sorry, priority queue print node. 
and so we call it queue copy. So as you can see that the the objective of this queue is to to uh, of this one is of this queue is to save as to serve as a copy of the previous one. Okay, if if this condition satisfies, basically we need to reduce the key. Okay, we, we need to reduce the, the key of that uh, of V. So instead of directly reducing the key of V or updating the, the key of the node of V, what we do is that we create a new node with the same ID as V, but with a different key. So we say this prim, prim node V copy equal to new prim node uh, V dot ID and with the new key that we want to associate with the node. And then next, otherwise, otherwise, uh, okay, so this is the V copy. And then we are going to, to uh, say, insert this node into, into the queue, into the copy of the queue. And otherwise, we're just going to insert V, the node of V into the queue not the copy of that. We, we, we won't create a copy of it. We just directly insert it. So this is what we do here. And at the end of the queue, we, uh, at the end, after this while, we just assign Q equal to Q copy. So, and with this, if you execute the code, you will be able to see the correct result. 37. Okay, so basically there are two major difficulties in, in, in this homework. The first one, is, I think it's three. Okay, the first one is to, to relate the prim node, relate the code to the prim node that structure that it provide for you. I divide this, I define this class for you. Uh, and the second, the second thing is that here, uh, you need to use the um, the iterator. You need to know how to use the iterator to go through the the, the queue. And and if you care, if you read the uh, if you read the API of of Cloud Queue carefully, actually it's just at over here. Oh, sorry, it's just over here. The class and is so you need to use the, the iterator. So so to to go through it. So you'll be able to to find it over here. And then the most difficult thing is to create a copy of the of the priority queue. That's the that's the most difficult part. So uh, that's why I say this homework is really difficult. And I, I couldn't explain these details to you earlier because unless you spend your time uh, uh, reading the the uh, the, uh, the the uh, uh, the the API of priority queue before you do that, if I just explain this to you, this is just like. Make no, no sense for you because you, you don't understand what I'm talking about. You'll be make, you won't be able to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so I can only talk about this after your homework, after your home, uh, you finish your homework tonight, basically after your homework tonight due date passed. So, uh, and I hope for, hopefully you can, we can understand it from my explanation now. And, uh, and when you are doing your homework 10, uh, when you're doing the digital algorithm, uh, you can start from if you haven't successfully got your your uh, prim node uh, wrong correctly. You can start from my explanation and uh, and to 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 do your uh, extra algorithm in homework ten. Okay, so let me see the chat earlier. Well, my code was longer. Yes, uh, yes. You're right. So it's, it could be. Uh, it should be. So I don't I don't see any any. Uh, I think this is the most concise version of the code to make it work. Uh, okay, so any question for me regarding the prim algorithm? Okay, let me put it another way. Type in one if you follow me until the end. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you. So, okay. So then hopefully it gives you some, this explanation gives you some, some uh, idea on how to implement that. And uh, it's really difficult, right? So if you figure it out successfully and pretty much in a similar way as I did, you are really great at programming.
when I was an undergraduate student, I, I was really far from that. <laughs> Okay, so, and then let's come back. So I just finished the first topic uh, for today, which is your homework and I, and now I'm going to briefly uh, talk about your final project. Okay, so um, uh, your, in your final project, you are going to implement an algorithm uh, to, to finish, uh, to, to solve the problem of all pair shortest path. And this is the slides. These are the slides. So the all pairs, I'm, I, so, so uh, as I told you briefly, uh, starting from your homework eight, I'm going, uh, no, yes, starting from your homework, homework eight, I'm going to slowly, slowly, re, uh, re, uh, I'm going to reduce my, my, the level of help, the, uh, the assistance to you, okay? In your homework eight, when you did your BFS, I give you a lot of uh, scaling code. I give you the scaling code. I give you hints. In homework nine, uh, when you did your uh, frame algorithm, I give you. I only give you the scaling code, but no hint. In your homework ten, which is uh, due this Friday, I only give you uh, in which you are going to do the uh, the Dijkstra and Bellman Ford. Dijkstra and Bellman Ford. I, I I there is no hint. And but there's scaling code in your home, in your whole final project. There will be nothing from me. Nothing from me. Okay, I'm not going to provide you anything anything because you have to become independent. So in this final project, you are going to implement an algorithm to solve the uh, all pair shortest path problem. I'm going to I'm not going to introduce the the algorithm for you. Instead, I'm just going to, to briefly introduce what is the problem for you? What is the all pair shortest the path? So, so previously we learned the, um, the uh, say uh, single source shortest path. So we are giving, so basically we're giving a directed and with weighted graph and also we're giving a source node. So, uh, and then it's going to output it's, go, it's all it's go, uh, the single source uh, shortest path algorithm is going to output the shortest path from the source node to every other node in the graph. Okay, so it is going to output a, a shortest path from the source to every other node of the graph. Whereas in the all pair shortest path problem, we are not going to be giving any source node. Instead, we just keep we are just giving this directed and weighted graph. And we're expected to find the shortest path or the shortest distance between every pair of nodes. So for example, here you are expected to find the shortest path between New York and DC, between New York, between Philly and Miami, and also between Montclair and, and Atlanta. Wait, can you repeat that? Hello? I think you went mute again. Because I don't hear him. Hello. Hello. Let me say. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Now I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. They. Uh. They. Uh. My. The Zoom on my iPad Pro just shut shut out without any, without letting me know. Uh. And uh. So it crashes very often. I'm sorry about that. Okay. So. 
Um, okay, I'm going to repeat uh, uh, my discussion before. So if, if is a single source shortest the path problem, then we're giving such a directed and weighted graph. And also we're giving a source node and the, we are expected to find the shortest path between this source node to every other node in the graph. Okay, so this is the, the output of single source shortest path. Whereas in the all pair shortest path our, uh, uh, problem, we're not going to be giving any source node. Instead, we're just giving we're just giving this undirected uh, sorry this directed and weighted graph, and we are supposed to to find the shortest path between every pair of nodes in the graph. So, for example, you are expected to find the shortest path from New York to Philly. Also, you are supposed to find the shortest path from DC to Atlanta, from Miami to from Miami to Boston. So et cetera, et cetera. Basically, you are supposed to find the shortest path between every pair of nodes in the graph. So that is the major difference between single source and all pair uh, shortest path. Is that clear? Yes, makes sense. Okay. So, so, um, so there, uh, there are basically two algorithms that can be used to solve the algorithm. The first one is named the slow version of that. And as, as you can say from this name, it's relatively slow. And the, but, uh, so, so, so it ends up with v to the power of four, uh, so, so uh, uh, complexity. So v, where v is the number of nodes in a graph. And so people design another algorithm that combines dynamic programming with graph search. This, uh, this algorithm is really beautiful because it is it's a combination of two beautiful concepts, dynamic, dynamic programming and shortest path, uh, sorry, and graph search. And so, so and people design this algorithm named Floyd Marshall. So it, it only takes one input, W. W is the weight, uh, is the, the, uh, the adjacency matrix, which tells you that the, uh, the, the, the distance of each edge in the graph. And it gives us the, the complexity of V cubic. So it, sig it significantly reduces the complexity by an order of one. And this is a, a big, big step uh, in terms of make the, the, the program efficient, okay? So this is the, the algorithm. This is the pseudocode of it. So it's not, good, it's not that hard for you to understand it, but, but definitely it's not that easy. So that's what, why I leave it as your final project. In your final project, so the format of your final project is that you can you can collaborate. So in a group with at most three students. Okay. So if you want to do it in, by yourself, that's that's also fine. Okay. So the thing is that first you you so you you, you can make a group and to work on it. And you you are giving a task first. That is to first understand the Floyd Washer algorithm. Floyd Washer algorithm. And second, you need to implement that from scratch. Okay? Implement from scratch means that you are not going to be given any pseudocode. You have to design the, uh, sorry, you're not going to be given any skeleton code. You have to come up all the code by yourself. But again, that's so first to understand this part, to, to understand the, 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 the outcomes, you only you need to read chapter 25.1, uh, chapter 25.2. This is around 1.5 hours of reading. Okay. And then to come to, to, imp to, to implement the algorithm. And so from scratch. So first you can, you can figure out the scattering code you can figure out the skeleton code from my previous, from, from the skeleton codes of previous homeworks, from homework eight, from homework nine, from homework 10. Then from there, you can derive your skeleton code because they're just pretty much similar. You have to define a class of graph and for something and then, then figure out the input. Uh, so, so and, and, yeah, and specify the constructor, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to uh, figure out the skeleton code the scan code, I would say, is, is also going to take you around one point and one hour and 30 minutes. 
Yeah. And after that, going to to the programming part to implement this this uh, uh, algorithm is not going to be difficult at all because, as you can see here, it only involves three for loops, and no very no very difficult thing, no priority queue, no queue. So you are only going to play with arrays, two dimensional arrays. So it's not that difficult. So it's around three hours of work. I would say the difficulty level of this one is equivalent to BFS. Okay, so so if you spend three hours on BFS, expect the same amount of time for the, for a similar amount of time for the Floyd Washoe, and this is going to be your final project. So your final project is going to be available today. On May 4th, and it's going to be due on May 20, 21st. So you have 17 days to work on it. But in my opinion, that's more than enough, even though we have the final exam next week, because um, uh, so because next, uh, so after, even after our, our final exam, you have 10 days to work, to, to work on it. So I think, uh, so the, the, the time is not going, uh, I don't think the time is going to be a problem for most of the students. Okay, so uh, here I got one question asking me, okay, so do we have to work with someone? No, as I said, if you, uh, if you want to do it, in a, if you want to work, work, work by yourself, you can you feel free to do that. It's, it's absolutely fine, but if you want to work in a group, in case you cannot understand the pseudocode and you want to have someone to discuss with, um, so you can work in a group. So we set it by ourselves, okay? And the other thing it, I, I want to mention is that even though you're working in a group, yes, if you want to collaborate, you have to work with someone in our section, yes. <clears throat> okay, so then, um, um, the the other question, uh, so oh, sorry, not the other question. And the other thing that I want to mention is that if you, no, if, even if you work in a group, say you your your group has three students, and when you submit your 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 so first each of each of you is going to to submit, everyone has to submit, the final project on Canvas, okay. If you don't submit, you will receive zero, and. Uh, the other thing is also, and also when you submit your home or uh, your final project, you need to submit the two files. The first one is the .java file that you created, which includes the program. The second one is a, a work, kind of like a word file, which describes the contribution from each group member. Say, hey, A does what, B does what, and C does what. And then the purpose of that, so everyone has to sub submit that and uh, uh, so so uh, even though you are submitting exactly the same thing with your group members, it's fine, but everyone has to submit to that. And the other, uh, and so the purpose of asking everyone to submit to that is that 60% of your performance of your grade is going to be based on your, your group. So it means that say, whether if your code compiles, whether if your, your code gives the correct output, and 40% is going to be totally based on your contribution. So if you want to earn a decent grade from the final project, make your contribution, work hard. You cannot just rely on uh, your, your teammate. You need to make your own contribution. When I was a student, I, I, don't, I, I didn't really like uh, group collaboration because most of the time it is me who does most, the most, most of the job. <laughs> So <laughs> I remember that uh, in my undergraduate years, we when we had a course uh, on web programming, I uh, so so uh, the the instructor gives us a final project, and we collaborate in a group of four. So so uh, it is me and the other guy in the group who who build all the uh, uh, who build the website by using JavaScript. The uh, sorry, by using the uh, J2EE, by using Java. And then uh, JSP uh, stuff. It, it takes a lot of time. It's, 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 uh, so it, it involves a lot of code because 
uh, it's based on J2E rather than uh, say something like HTML rather than something like JavaScript. So, so the, the coding task, the coding load is, is really heavy. Me and that, at that uh, I collaborated with that teammate. We basically spent two weeks. We, we didn't even leave the, the dorm, basically. We just stay in the dorm for two weeks and consecutively we work on the final project and we, we finally got the, the, the website very fancy. And uh, uh, well, so, so, and we are, we are, we are asked to, to submit the code plus a document. Uh, so, so to, 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 so which tells what you do in this project. Okay, so after working so hard, me and that friend said, okay, let's leave the documentation work to the other two teammates. So we, we spent an, an afternoon with them and explain everything. And so then we, we, we let them to take care of the rest. And me and my friend just went to play uh, video games, computer games for the rest of the days. Uh, so because we think, okay, we're going to get a very decent grid that the instructor is going to, uh, to, 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 to appreciate that. But you know what, what do we get at the last? Can you imagine that? Yes, we got a 61. In my home country, if you if you, your grade is less than 60, you fail. So 61 is something like D minus. Damn. Yes. So so uh, after that, I don't like I said, okay, I don't like it. Uh, but but so so since I'm a, a professor and now and I realized the problem with with that kind of teamwork is that they pe people know that uh, if they don't contribute they still can get the uh, so they can rely on someone else in the team to to do to do the work so here that's why I say that um, sixty percent of the performance rely on group forty. 40% relies, relies uh, uh, on your contribution, okay? So if you want to make a good grade, get a good grade from the final project, take your time and make your contribution, okay? So, okay, so this is pretty much everything that I want to talk about um, uh, the, the final project. Any question for me regarding the, the final project? Professor, I have a quick question. So mm -hmm. on the code that we do within the project, if we just comment like which lines of code that we contributed, is that also acceptable? Yes, but I, if I were you, I probably would take a screenshot of something of the code and say, okay, these lines are coded by this person and, that, those, and those lines are coded by another person. Okay. Yeah, because Thank you. when I created, when I or the TA grade your your home your your final project, we mostly we would the we we just the usually we just run your code to see if it's correct, and then we're going to directly go to your your document to see the contribution. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so any other question regarding the final project? I had a question regarding the final exam. Okay. Um, will, will it be on Lockdown Browser? No. Oh, I guess. No. Will Is it be there... timed? Oh, the, 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 you mean the final exam? I'm going to talk about the final uh, today, there are three topics. The first one is homework nine. The second one is the final project. And the last one, the most important thing is the final exam. So which is going to be my topic after this one, after the final project. So, so for now, just ask me questions regarding the final project. Okay, so if no more question regarding the final project, then I'm going to go through the final exam, okay? So
so um, um, first, uh, I think I'm going. Okay, so your final project is going to be giving. Sorry, the final exam is going to be giving uh, next week. So at exactly the same time as our class from from uh, five thirty p.m. until. 6 45 p.m. next uh tuesday tuesday may 11th okay so it's going to be 75 minutes long and uh so it's going to be online and uh you don't need to lock lock down your 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 web browsers because even though you google you google those answers you google the questions you won't be able to see the answers it's not going to help us, only going to waste our, your time. So, uh, and uh, this is the time. And I would suggest you to uh, go to Canvas, log on to your Canvas around 5.25 p.m. Because at that time, I'm going to upload the final exam questions. And so from there, you will be able to, uh, so, so, uh, so, so around this time, around 5.25, I'm going to uh, upload that so that you can you can just 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 go through uh, just, uh, uh, check it at that time check up uh, and so make sure that you upload your uh, final exam by this time because the, the final exam uh, is going to be locked at 645 so so if you go past the, the time then uh, well, you something. say it? Okay, so if you if you uh, say say if you are late, you won't be able to submit that. Okay, and uh, uh, the format is that the format of the final exam is that I'm going to have a PDF file for you, PDF file for you, and you can just you have two options. Either you print out you print it out and use a piece of pen or pencil to to to, to write down your answers on the paper uh, on the printouts. Or you can just totally work work on it digitally. Say you just use a Word file. You just create a Word file which lists your answers. That is also fine. But uh, both, both either way is fine, and uh, the time is not going to be a, a big problem for you. So uh, so uh, but when, at the time when you submit, when you submit that, say if you if you print it out and uh, uh, say 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 write, write down your answers with with uh, pencil and you need to take pictures of the of your of your paper right so do not just sub do not sub just not do not submit the jpg files do not just submit your 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 picture files instead sub create a pdf file create a pdf file of your pictures from your pictures uh, you can you can do it with adobe a uh, pdf reader that is it's pretty easy uh, so just submit a PDF file, or you can just copy and paste those uh, those images into a Word file and export it as a export it as a PDF, uh, and just submit your PDF file. The reason is that if you submit a, an image file, I, I cannot make notes, make comments on those files when I when I when I was do my grading work, so that you won't be able to say, okay, where did you make a mistake? So so the only thing that you can say is is a great uh, so so but instead if you just do it in a, if you just submit a pdf pdf file i can make comments over there so you know where where to lose points and it's going to make a lot of sense for you okay so sub, but just submit a pdf file and on canvas and then you are done with your your final exam okay <clears throat> so so uh uh, then uh, here I just want to uh, talk about the uh, the top. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the time and uh, the, time, the 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 schedule of the final of the final exam. And uh, so so let me say. Uh, uh, and here I'm not sure if 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 you asked me that question before, uh, but. Next, I'm going to talk about what questions would show up in your final exam. So 
you know, so these are the four chapters that we discussed so far in the semester. I basically this divide divide the course into four chapters, sorting algorithms, basic data structures, dynamic programming, and graph search algorithms. So we got four chapters. Uh, we got four chapters. And then in our final exam, you're going to have four questions. Each question is co corresponds to one chapter, okay? So, and, uh, and uh, in, in, the, in the final exam, there is going to be no multi-choice questions. No multi-choice questions. I don't like that at all because if if I give you a multi-choice a couple of multi-choice questions, if even though you don't have a good understanding of it, uh, if you are lucky enough, still you are, you you can get a, a good grade. So I don't want to do that because the reason why I don't why I don't have any uh, multi-choice question is that because this in this course in the beginning of this of this course I told you that I have two objectives. I basically have two major objectives. The first one is for you to understand the pseudocode, pseudocode, or say understand the data structures plus algorithms, okay? And the second objective is to do the coding and the implementation part. Okay, implementation and coding. So this, the second object is mainly done through homeworks. We've got, we've got 10 homeworks plus one, one final exam, which is a lot of coding for you. And so this, I think the second objective is, is, has been sufficiently uh, studied, but regarding the first one or sufficiently evaluated. But for the first one, the only chance for me to do that is, is through your final exam. So in the final exam, I, the, I basically want you to want, want to evaluate your understanding of the algorithms and that structures as, as well as the complexity. So, so uh, the format of that is like I'm going to so uh, I'm going to say uh, give you the third code. I'm going to give you the third code, and also I'm going to give you an input example. Suppose if insertion sort shows up in your final exam. It could be something like this, okay? I give you a suit code like this, and also I give you a, an input example. So say, okay, hey, I got this in, uh, I got this array for you, A, this is the array A, and I want you to run the insertion sort algorithm over this example. And tell me, what does the, what, 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 what does the array look like after each iteration of the, for loop, okay? That, that the question is going to be something like that. I, I would ask you, what, is, what does the array look like after, it, after each iteration of the for loop? So you are going to tell me uh, this, okay? After the first iteration, then the array is going to look to be something like this, two, five, four, six, one, three. This is because if you run the pseudo code against the, uh, the, the, the input example, this is the output. Uh, this is how the, uh, or what does the array look like after the first iteration of the for loop. And then in, after the second one, it will be two, four, five, six, one, three. Okay. After the third one, the array is going to be something like this, two, four, five, six, one, three. Okay, so basically I want to make sure that you really understand the pseudo code. You really understand how to uh, run a piece of pseudo code against any input example. <clears throat> okay, make sense? So it's basically concept-based. You're basically asking for concept, right? Not exactly. If, 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 if it's concept based, I probably would ask you, okay, uh, tell me the process of, of insertion sort. I, I basically would ask you to, to use a, a couple of sentences to describe insertion sort. No, I think this is more like pseudocode sort of based. Say, say uh, I want you to, 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 to demonstrate that you, you understand the pseudocode. Sort of and is it gonna be multiple choice like these types of questions? 
as I said earlier, no multiple choice questions. No, there are always okay. going to be four questions. Each of them is pretty much like, I'm going to give you the pseudo code. Show me what is the, the expected output of this pseudo code against the one input example. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. No problem. Okay. So if I give you the, the, the question like this, insertion sort and plus this input example, do you think that you can figure out the the, the solutions. I mean, the the uh, the uh, uh, the array after each iteration. Having one, if you think that you can do it correctly now. Okay, great, great. Yes, this is what I expected, and uh, great, cool. It means that you are pretty confident. Yeah, that, that's great. Okay, so um, so and also I probably will ask you something like. What is the complexity of a certain algorithm? Say, for example, after you figured out, uh, after you figure out this, this, uh, the, uh, the, the shape of the array, and I, I probably will ask you, okay, what is the, what is the, the, uh, the, uh, the complexity of insertion sort? Then, then I would expect you to write down this whole square. Okay, so uh, this is pretty much. Uh, the, the 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 format of the of the final exam. So that's why I said that uh, it's not going to be a a uh, say for example. Uh, you, I don't I don't enforce you to lock down your computers. Yes. Oh yes. Worst, worst case. When I talk about complexity, you always write down the worst case. Okay. So so uh, that's why I said that I don't I don't. Uh, ask you, I don't require you to lock down your computers because you are not going to be able to find the solutions online. It's, it's only going to waste our time. So I don't worry about that. And uh, uh, so, so uh, this is the format of the final, of the final exam. So <laughs> you have been waiting for an exam all semester long. <laughs> okay, so yes. I mean, it depends on the format of the exam. So if, say, when I took this course at Stevens in my PhD, uh, I'm not sure if I told you before. So the, the instructor is from Russia. So uh, uh, I don't have any discrimi discrimination based on the nation. I'm just talking about a, a, a very fun experience. When I taught this course, this course, uh, well, sorry, when I took this course at Stevens in my, in my PhD life, this course was scheduled in the evening uh, from like 5.30. Yes, exactly at the same time as us, almost, or I think it's from 6 to 8.30 or something like that. Uh, so in the, when the instructor came to, to, and came to our classroom, uh, almost half of the time we smell alcohol. It means that that, that instructor just drink some, some, some liquor before the beginning of the class. So, so that, that guy couldn't teach, I, I have to say that he, he couldn't teach well, so he just read the slides. And that's, that's pretty boring. And do you know, uh, so what is the format of the final exam he gave to us? In, the final, in his final exam, he gave us four questions, sorry, 10 questions. Okay, so each question is like this. Write down the pseudocode of insertion sort. Write down the pseudocode of merge sort. From scratch, each question is just a, a page of paper, and uh, one, one paper, and on top of that, it says, okay, write down the pseudocode of which algorithm. So, we, we know that from, from the students who took that class from previous years. So we learned that. So when I prepared that final exam, I just spent two days trying to memorize all the algorithms in my, in my, in my brain and it gives me a lot of headache. And I don't like that because the, the reason is that after the final exam, when I, when I just go to the final exam, I just write down as much as I can memorize and I think I got a A minus from that class. Uh, damn it, I, I work pretty hard. I, 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 I really remember a lot of things in my head. But the, the problem is that 
one week after final exam, I forgot almost everything because it's not going. I mean, I spent two, two days and got nothing in my brain after one week. So, so um, that's not going. I don't like that experience, and uh, uh, I don't think it's 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 helpful for me at all. It's, it's it's not going to be helpful for for anyone uh, because this is not the skill that these algorithms are not the skills that you are going to take you are going to use every day so what's what's the point of trying to memorize all, all the pseudo code am i going to to go to a, a job in coding interview tomorrow no if i have to go to a job in the, uh, if you, i need to go to a job interview tomorrow i have to memorize this but since my app my normal life is like uh, taking classes and reading papers. What's the point of, of um, memorizing all of them? So, uh, so uh, that's the reason. That's also the reason why I said in our in our final exam, I'm going to give you the pseudo code. I don't expect you to memorize. Uh, so, so hopefully it, it will make your experience a little bit better. And uh, okay, so. <clears throat> uh, any question regarding the uh, the format of the final exam? Yeah, Professor, um, the pseudocode that you provide us, will it be for algorithms we've all already seen before? Or do you plan to like show us different things too? Uh, we have, all of them will be based on what we have learned. We, you will not be giving a new one. I cannot say you only have 35 minutes, uh, sorry, 75 minutes. Meaning that for each for each for each question, you roughly get uh, eighteen point seventy five minutes for each question. If I give you a new piece of uh, of algorithm and ask you, okay, what is the up? Uh, uh, what do you ask you to have a good understanding of it within eighteen minutes? No, that's too that's too much. Even even I can't guarantee you I can do that. Okay, so so uh, all 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 of the all, all of the pseudo code will be based on what we have learned. No new algorithm. Okay. <clears throat> so, any other question regarding the format of that? Um, I guess just um, will it only be like. A question about like what's the output given input, or do you also want to like know other stuff about like the algorithm when they pop Most up? of them would be like that, but for one question, I would probably ask you something like, uh, say, what is the key idea behind that, or what is the key property behind that? So, but definitely the answer is included in our slides. Sort of like how like on the, uh, I think on the single source path stuff, you said like a short path contains the most end nodes and connected by- No, I, I, no, I want thing. to be, okay, I, it's just this. What is the binary search tree property? Something like this. What is the property of binary search tree? What makes a tree become a, what makes a binary tree become a binary search tree? Something like this. Okay. Okay, so. Any other question? Okay. So if no question, then uh, I'm going to discuss the content of the final exam. So, so far we finished the format and schedule, and now I'm going to discuss the content. Again, let's say our course includes this, this is our course. We have four chapters, sorting algorithms. And then we have the uh, basic data structures. A chapter about basic data structures. And so let's say in sorting, in the in, in sorting chapter, how many, al how many sorting al algorithms did we learn? What are the sorting algorithms that we have learned? Can anyone record? Well, quick sort, yes. counting sort, insertion. Yes. The first one that we learned is insertion and 
And then the second one we learned is merge. And then we learned quick and we learned Connie. So we briefly went over heap sort, but we don't we don't go through, we didn't go through the details of that because that's too difficult. So I leave it as an option, an optional task for you. Okay, so basically we, here we learn four algorithms in this chapter, uh, four algorithms in the um, in the uh, uh, in, in the first chapter for sorting out algorithms in the first chapter. And in the, in the basic data structures, how many algorithms did we, uh, sorry, how many data structures did we learn? Or let's say, what kind of data structures did we learn? Linkless. Yes, Singly so the fourth one we, we learned is stack and queue. Queues, linked list. Linked list. And then we learned um, the uh, binary search tree, right? So in, in stack, we in the stack, we basically, so in stack and queue, we learned each of them, each of them, we learned three algorithms, which are the, uh, the uh, say, say the uh, uh, insertion, deletion, and the empty function. And also we learned these three functions for the link the list, right? We have the insertion and deletion for, and also search in, in linked list. So, and in binary search tree, let's, let's make them a little bit longer, this list a little bit longer. In binary search tree, what kind of algorithms did we learn? First, we learned the traverse algorithm. And we have three different orders, which are in order. And uh, uh, so pre-order and post-order. And then we learned uh, the, the function named search. Okay, we learned the search function and then we learned the mean minimum and the max. And then we learned the insertion. And we learned the, uh, the uh, say, say successor function. Also, we learned the deletion function. We just briefly discussed the deletion function because it's too complicated. So, Oh, in, in, in BFS, we learn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We learn nine algorithms. So basically, then in the second chapter, in the second chapter, we learn four data structures plus, let me say, how many algorithms? So 18 algorithms, 18 functions. And then, so we come to uh, the uh, Okay, this is what we covered in the second chapter. And then we come to the, uh, <clears throat> the third chapter on dynamic programming. So on dynamic programming, which problems have we discussed? The first problem that we discussed is rod card, right? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we firstly discussed RODCAD and then we learned LCS. And also we briefly discussed the optimal binary search tree. Right? So here we learned three algorithms in, in dynamic program. And then next, let's say what, what did we learn in the last chapter? That is like the graph. So first we learned the graph data structure, graph data structure, and then we learned BFS, BFS, DFS, and two algorithms based on DFS. Uh, based on DFS are topological sword and as strongly connected components. I'm just going to write down the, the abbreviation for them. And then we learned the, uh, the uh, so minimum spanning tree problem. Uh, we, in the minimum spanning tree problem, we learned the prim algorithm. And then it is the single source shortest the path problem and in which we learn two algorithms, which are the Bellman Ford and Dijkstra. So, and also lastly, we learned the, uh, the all pair shortest the path problem. So which can be solved by the uh, Bell, uh, sorry, Floyd Washer, which is your final uh, project. Okay, so, 
in the last chapter, in total, we learned one data structure plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight plus eight algorithms. Okay, so here you can see that in the whole semester, we in total we learned five. Uh, let me write, write it down over here. We learned five data structures plus, <clears throat> let's say, how many algorithms? Uh, four, eight plus 18 plus three, uh, 25, 25 plus 33 algorithms. Okay. So if I ask you to prepare to, to so, so first, uh, before that, let's say first, I have to applaud, apologize for you guys because I think that I, I push you a lot in this course. Uh, I, I, I really teach a lot of material. I, I really cover a lot of materials in our class, and I give you a lot of homeworks, coding, coding homeworks. And uh, uh, so you, 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 you have almost every week you, you, you will have something due from our class. And uh, so first, I apologize for that because I, I, I think I give you kind of like a hard time. And, uh, uh, but I have to. So the reason is this, as I, as I said in the beginning of the semester, um, this, this course is the one that basically decides if you can be a programmer or not, be a software engineer or not. And there is no shortcut to, uh, there is no shortcut to be a good programmer. For me for myself, uh, I spend a lot of a lot of time on programming, and even nowadays, I still learn new stuff. So I'm just going to show you what I'm learning today and uh, what I'm exploring today. Say, so, uh, uh, this is my life. So, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. What, so here, what I'm doing, this is uh, what I'm writing today. So here, what I'm doing is that I'm, you guys know blockchain and Bitcoin, right? Yes, sir. So, and here I'm just using the blockchain technology to wrap arts, to wrap arts. Arts meaning some collectibles like, uh, so there is a concept named NFT. Uh, you, can, you can just check this concept named NFT, non-fungible token, which is, which, which is like we store ours, we store ours in on blockchain system, on the blockchain system so that it can be verified by everyone. So there is there is not going to be any fake thing and we can exchange those things. So so it's 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 pretty much like an art wrapped by blockchain. So this is what uh, and there is a very famous one called Topshop. So people, yes, Topshop NFT. So people just use that is sponsored by NBA. Basically, in the uh, in the world of NBA, uh, you can just just take uh, each mo so so uh, so uh, how to here you can you can explore more. Basically, uh, you can so if there is a short from a player and it scores, and that moment is going to be an art. So you can you can own that art, and people pay a high price for this one. So it's a, it's a really hot topic. And here I'm just exploring how to how to how to do that by myself. And say here I define the smart contract, which is the the, the bone backbone of of a block of blockchain or Bitcoin by myself. And here I'm just used for uh, uh, writing some some say say uh, here I'm just writing some uh, scripts uh, Python scripts to deploy. Uh, an art uh, or so a uh, collectible on, on the blockchain system. And one very cool thing is here, if you look at, if I go to the end of it, you can see, I just created a blockchain, uh, an art on a, uh, on, a, on a marketplace. This is pretty much like the coin base for, for NFTs. And this is the art that I created. And so I, so now everybody can say it. Okay, so this is created by, by me four hours ago, right before I, I taught this class. And uh, yes, so this is my life. I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to use some new language. For example, this, this the smart contract is defined in the language of Solidity. 
I have to learn from scratch by myself. And gradually, gradually, I pick up more about it. And uh, so, so this is what I, so how I become a good programmer. So same for you, okay? There is no shortcut other than what's called. That's why I have to say that in this course, I really give you a lot of work. And uh, uh, I feel sorry about that if, if, if I push you too much. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I would rather push in my, in my, in my room as a person who, who prefer to push myself rather than the other people. So, uh, but, I, but I don't regret doing it for you because that's the way to, to let you become good programmers. You will pay the tuition, at least the tuition for my class uh, just to learn programming. So, so I have to do, do it in that way. So, so uh, that's okay. I'm sorry if, if I give you too much work. And, uh, and but, uh, I'm, at the same time, I'm pretty proud because if you, if you look at the syllabi of, of the death structure course from the other universities, for example, from Rutgers, from NJIT, from Stevens, from, from even from MIT, MIT has an open courseware. So basically they, they publish the videos of, of, of their death, death structure class on their web, website. So you can you feel free to go to explore that. So what we, you, you guys learn more than the, those guys in their, from their class. I, I, I teach more things than what they teach. So um, I'm pretty proud, I'm pretty proud about that. Uh, so so you, don't, you don't compare with those top, uh, top universities. Um, you, you, at least from this course, you don't lose anything. Uh, you um, you are not in a disadvantaged uh, position, and uh, so so these are the content that we, we have covered in the semester. And I, if I ask you to get to to, rec uh, to to go through all of them in order to prepare your final exam, that will be too much. So the purpose of my final review section is to reduce your workload. So next, I'm just going to tell you what you need to pre do you need to prepare. Okay, so in the sorting algorithm part, we only need to prepare these two algorithms, <clears throat> merge sort and quick sort. In the, um, in the uh, basic depth structure part, you only need to focus on binary search tree. Uh, in specific, you need to focus on traverse and search. Okay, only these two uh, functions are fine. <clears throat> and, and then uh, in the dynamic programming part, you need to focus on Rod cut and uh, the LCS problem. And in the graph part, you need to focus on BFS, <coughs> Dijkstra, and Prim algorithm. Okay, so, so here, in, in order for you to prepare the final exam, you only need to prepare one, one data structure plus nine algorithms. Okay, so instead of preparing five plus 33, you are going to prepare one plus nine. And each algorithm is, if you, if you don't have a good understanding of these algorithms, you need to go, go back to, to our video lectures to, 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 uh, to study the game. And each of them roughly takes you 30 minutes, each of them. So, in, so, uh, so it will be 0 0.5 hours for each, and so this is like like uh, four point five hours thing. And for the data structure, it's another zero point five hours. So in total, it's a five hour workload for, for you to 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 get prepared for the final exam. And uh, uh, but this is based on the uh, the assumption that you don't have a very good good understanding of them from our lecture. Uh, uh, if you already have a good understanding of it, I would say it's around two hours. So uh, I don't. I know that you guys are pretty busy because you 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 also have the other exams and the other final projects. Uh, so I don't want to give you too much workload. Uh, so so at the end of the semester. So so that's why I have this section just tell you what you need, what you need to prepare and all the things that we need to cover uh, that is going to be discussed. Oh, that is going to you need to 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 understand 
to, to get a good grade from the final exam are listed in this final review slides, which is around 70 pages. So for example, here, uh, the, the, in the beginning, we have insertion story. We can totally ignore it because it's not going to be insertion story. It's not going to show up in the final exam. Only to look at the slides of merge sort and then go to quick sort, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is the way for you to to prepare the final exam in a short amount of time. Uh, okay, so this is the content of the final exam. Um, so, any question for me? Yeah, so I see the slides, but um, I uh, for Zoom, the recordings, uh, even the previous ones aren't there. I, I know I received an email from the school saying that they were deleting recordings. No, if you go to the YouTube channel, all of the videos are there. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Just going to show you. Show it to you. Uh, I think I posted the YouTube channel links on Canvas. So in case you don't, uh, you in case that you forget it, uh, so you you don't know the link, just go to the 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 Canvas announcements, and you will be able to see it over there. So here I'm just going to pull up your videos. So say so, you now this is okay. So I'm going to share my screen okay on my laptop. So here is the is the uh, the place playlist for your section. All the lectures are there. All the video lectures are there. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> the YouTube algorithm. Okay, maybe it's because the YouTube algorithm. Uh, because you viewed my my. My, my lectures before and it's just recommended for you. Okay, all the all the ones are there. And also I'm going to upload this one tonight after we finish. Okay. So <clears throat> okay. And uh, so any other question regarding the final exam? No? No question? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. So, and then, um, so, uh, the one thing that I want to briefly mention about you is that, uh, so that is for my personal purpose, okay? So I think that you should have already received the email asking for the teaching evaluation, right? The course evaluation. Have you received that? Yes, okay. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, when I was a student, uh, I didn't pay a lot of attention to that. I feel like, um, I feel like say, say, no matter what I say, uh, I'm not going to make an impact. So I, I just do not submit an, any of my response over there. But, but after I become a professor, at least in the United States, I feel like, yes, no, your words actually make a difference. So, but in a very limited way. So there are two types of professors, which are tenured and untenured. So uh, untenured, tenured. So, okay. Tenured meaning that you, those, basically those are the senior people. Uh, who have already demonst demonstrated their value to the university. So they got their tenure, meaning that it's going to be a, a forever job for them. They are not, they, are not go they won't be fired as long as they do not break the law. So no matter how, how bad do they teach, how good or bad do they teach, no matter how, say, say, how good or bad do they do the research, 
they're going to have their job forever. This is the, 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 the system of, the, uh, of the, the universities in the United States and also uh, in Europe. So your cost course evaluation is not going to make any impact for those, for those uh, tenured people. They're going to have their jobs forever. And, but you, your, your uh, say, say course evaluation does have a impact for big impact for the untenured professors. Someone like, so for example, in our, in our department, some untenured professor like me, like, I'm not sure. So give me some names of your, of your professors that are, not, uh, that are not very senior. Look, do not look very senior. I, I, can, I can just, just let you know whether if they're tenured or not. Lab, lab not tenured. Chris Labknight Lab, Lab is tenured. Anything, anyone else? Dr. Shang. Oh, Jason Shang? Yes, he's on tenure. He's even uh, junior than me. He, I think he, he joined our department one year ago. Yeah, yeah, he's like 25. He's really young. Yeah. Okay, so any other one on tenure? I'm not sure if you take some course like from Jiayin Wang. He, I think she teaches 111, 112. And also, let me say, Dawidi. And uh, Yibai, there's someone like Yibai, Anu. So these guys are on tenure, including me. Okay, including me. So so your words make a difference for these people. Okay, so so if you if you like if you like these people, if you take a class from this on tenure professor, just provide your honest, honest opinion to the to the university when you are doing your course evaluation because because it's going to to make your your evaluation is going to make an impact so so just do your part and uh, uh for for those tenure ones for those senior ones so no matter what you say the university is not going cannot do anything okay so uh so uh, uh so so pay attention to your course evaluation, at least for our course, just I'm not asking you to give me all the best reviews, whatever. So yes, Charlie's attic. I think he already left. He's 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 on tenure and he's not even in a tenure track. He's a, an instructor, meaning that he's he's on he works on contract basis, say like an ordinary employee rather than a professor. So I don't think there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, say say student. I don't think think to be honest from the the feedbacks that I received about him, maybe he does not teach in a good way. That's why he left. So um, so uh, just 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 provide your uh, yeah okay. So he would come to his the class late every day. Yes, so that's why he left. Um, so you always make a difference for these people, but not for those um, for those tenured one. So so just provide your, your honest opinions to, to 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 our class, and and no matter if you like me or do, do not like me, uh, say uh, say your words. It's it's really going to be important because I'm going to apply for my tenure this year. So so. It, uh, so, so your words is, is going to make a your word is going to make a big difference. Uh, so, so yes, say. Uh, mm, uh, but I'm not asking you to 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 give me a, a five star uh, rating. Um, no need. Uh, just just do whatever you think that you uh, I deserve. Okay, and uh, so that's the the thing from my side, and uh, so. Uh, okay, so uh, since this is uh, literally the last lecture of our course, because next week we are going to have the final exam, and the week in the last week I'll, I'll leave the time for you to do your to do your final project. So literally this is our last lecture. So now, and we still have some time. So take your time to ask me questions if you want. Thank you for your compliments in the chat area. Really appreciate that. So now, take the advantage of this opportunity to ask me questions. So maybe you will uh, take one of my classes later uh, in your in your program. Maybe not. So 
So uh, if you have anything, if you have any question, just ask it. Does it have to be related to the, the exam or the course? No, no, right? it does not have to be related. So, so it can be anything. So here I got one question from the chat area. Which classes will you teach again? So um, I, I'm not sure about the long future because the, the department is only going to tell me uh, which course I'm going to teach one year or half or one semester or half. Next semester, I'm going to teach 212 again and uh, 545, uh, big data analytics. 545 is big data analytics. Okay, so in that class, I'm going to teach something like uh, face recognition, object, de object detection, and uh, like image classification, something like that. So, but in the long future, I don't know. Uh, I really have no idea, but I, I personally, I would like to keep this class, keep this course to 12, because in my point of view, this is the most important one for undergraduate CS or IT students. And I think I'm, I can't say that I'm teaching ex extremely well, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm quite confident in my teaching because at least I, I pay efforts in my teaching. So, so I would rather keep this course, uh, I, I would like to keep, keep this course rather than let someone else who teach it. So, because in that way, still the, the, the content that the student will receive from this, the most important class is going to be unpredictable. So, so, uh, so uh, yes, that's why I said that I want to keep this one. I know you said that uh, the other class was databases, I believe that you said it was the other most important. Yes, yes. Two you, most would you like to teach one. that as well? No, uh, that one I think is already taught by uh, a very good instructor named Alpana Baldi. So she's good. Yeah, so I, I won't, I probably will not teach that one. So, because she, I know she's good. Uh, I, 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 I went to audit her class a, a couple of times. Yes, she, she's good. Okay, I, I saw the comments from Ricky. Thank you. So, so another question. <clears throat> yeah, um, so, so uh, did you go directly from your bachelor's to your PhD at Stevens? Yes. And what year did you start? So I did. I did my bachelor from uh, from 2007 to 2011, and then I started my. I, I did my PhD from uh, 2011 to 2016. I see, because I was looking that they wanted you to have your master's now, unless you're like an excellent. Yes. So the thing is that it's it's going to be better. To have to have a master, say, say, but the reason for me to directly go for PhD is that I don't have the money, uh, so to 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 pay the tuition of a master. A master is is going to cost around thirty thousand dollars each year on average. So it's like totally anywhere from fifty thousand to a hundred thousand. I don't have that money, and so I have to go for a PhD directly because in PhD I got. I got a the scholarship. It's guaranteed. It's almost guaranteed that you got the scholarship to pay your tuition, and also you, you I got a stipend to pay my living cost. So, but the thing is that at the time when I apply for my PhD, if I don't apply for my PhD, I got my PhD from Stevens. If I don't apply for my PhD, if I go, I just go for master. Then if I if I were able to afford my master, I I definitely can go to some school like UPenn, which is much better than Stevens or CMU or USC, much better schools. So then from there, if I apply for PhD, I, I will be able to apply for uh, stay in this, at the same level of, of, of schools. But I, I didn't have that money. And I, so, so that's why I directly go for PhD, PhD uh, even though the schools, the school is not go, going to be that good. So uh, in our, yeah, I remember you were telling us about the, like, uh your fa like how much your family made and like the dorming and tuition costs yes. but in tr in terms of uh that like i know money isn't everything but uh for like the school you graduate with or the prestige 
But uh, Stevens has like top 10 for average uh, alumni salary mm -hmm. graduates. So, I mean, it's still an excellent school. Yes, yeah, it's, it's excellent, but it's compared with CMU or UPenn, it's nothing. I have to say that. Yeah, I Basically, see. you are comparing. If UPenn and uh, CMU is like Porsche, then Stevens probably is like something like Audi or, or BMW. They're at different levels. I see, I understood. Okay, so here, I'm just going to read a couple of questions from the chat area. Chat, chat area, what, what about Dr. Herbert in databases? To be honest, I don't know. Uh, I, have, I, I never went to her class, uh, so I don't know. Uh, but I would say Dr. Valde, uh, our partner Valde, if, if Dr. our partner Valde, teaches database, upon about it, teaches the database course, I would definitely recommend you to, to take her class. Uh, I know her, uh, I know her, her teaching actually. So uh, uh, I remember you were telling us about how much your parents, okay, yeah, this is the, 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 the thing from you. I got into Stevens, but even with scholarship, it was too much. Yes, yes, that's true. So. When, when I started my PhD at Stevens, their undergraduate student tuition is 60,000 a year, flat rate. That's crazy. <laughs> so yes, some of, I know some of them got half, 50% off as a, as a scholarship, but still that's a lot. And so, I mean, um, Education is an, uh, is an investment. So unless you got your parents to pay everything, all the costs of your education, you have to be careful about it. It's like investment on Bitcoin or on, on, on stock. You need to be, be smart about that. Yes, 56K right now. Yes, if you look at the, the, the rate of, of, the, the, uh, of the, the tuition increase in the United in, in the United in the United States in the past 20 years, it's around 12% increase every year in terms of the tuition cost. The reason is that the, the, the government keeps decreasing the, their, the education fund for the universities. The reason, do you know why is that? Because if they, if they cut their cost for the other people, say for example, if they cut the cost for pension, if they cut the cost of pension, then those retired people are going to occupy the government, not occupy the Wall Street. They are going to occupy the, the, the government. But if they, just, if they cut it for the healthcare, then people, they, they fund for healthcare, then the people are going to go on strike. But if they just cut the, 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 the investment on the education fund, do you know what, what is going to be the, the story? You guys, the students, are going to take more student loan because you are young, you have the time to pay the loan. So, so unlike the, those retired people, they only have 15 years or 10 years left. They can't take any loan. The bank is not going to, to approve their, their, their loan request. So all the burden comes to you guys, which is a very sad thing. Yes, I think you are smart. You said that you're paying every, paying every, everything. So Montclair for me uh, was ideal because I had a full ride and got back fifteen thousand dollars every semester. Yes, that's a smart choice. I would say here. So if you compare, stay here. If if you compare, yes, uh, uh, I'm not sure if I'm, I talked about this before. I think probably yes, but say the the thing is that yes. If you talk about, say, I'm just going to this way, in this way, okay. If this is CMU, this is Stevens, and this is Montclair, they are at three different levels, right? In terms of the reputation and the ranking, CMU is the best and Stevens is probably on the second level. And then following that is Montclair on the third level. But this, they're on different levels in terms of what? In terms of research, in terms of research. So, so, uh, but in terms of teaching, which is the most important thing why you come to this school, I think they are equivalent. They're almost the same. In terms of research, yes, they have this relationship. 
or in terms of teaching. At least at Montclair, uh, I think at least at Montclair, I, because I'm at Montclair, I think I teach better than most of the instructors that I had at, at Stevens, if not all. So um, yes, in terms of uh, the, the teaching, which is the reason why you come to, to, to the university, you, these three schools are at the same level, similar level. So, so why not, why just pay $60,000 to go to the, the first two schools? Why not just come to Montclair and pay around $6,000 a, a semester? Okay. <clears throat> so I think you, you made a, a smart choice. What are some stocks you think is worth investing in? Investing on a single stock is too risky. It's too risky. Uh, for example, if you, 30 years ago, if you invest on Ford, I think at that time, Ford, Ford, Ford stock price is around $200. And now it's it only becomes 30, around 30, 40. So it's too risky. Instead, I, I, I would recommend you to invest on fund which is a a fund is basically a combination of multiple stocks so the risk that you get is much lower okay so for if you really want to invest on stock and take the risk do not invest on stocks invest on something called this ethereum Okay, it's, it's kind of like Bitcoin. So, so now it's, its price is around $3,000, $3,300 a year. Yeah, sorry, $3,300 each. I think its price is going to, my, my estimation is that its price is going to be around 10K by the end of the next year. That's my estimation. Uh, but Again, so if you invest on this thing, a, sing, a single stock or, or, or blockchain or Bitcoin, be prepared to lose everything. So if you, if you can take that risk, do it. Otherwise, go for farms. It's, it's safer. So, <clears throat> so just for, uh, one question from the chat, or just for some history perspective, when were most of the algorithms in this course invented? 1970s. Most of them are invented or were invent, invented in this stage. Because in 90, I think in 1950, computer science enjoyed a big boom. So because of a person named Alan, tu Alan Turing, this guy is a genius. So I think this guy is like the Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan. Um, in, in the world of computer science. He, this guy himself designed more algorithms than the other people, all the other people. But uh, so he, he died in the end of 1950s at a very young age, which is uh, a very sad thing for, for the world. It's a big loss for the world. Uh, yes, he has a movie. And, um, uh, and uh, so 20 years uh, or, or or 10 years because of this guy. When this guy was alive, most people do not write, can, could, could, couldn't even understand his albums. So 10 years or 15 years after his death, people started to, to understand his albums and then make some improvements over his contribution. So that's why we see most of the albums that we learned today were invented in, in 1970. That guy is really a genius. I think he died in Princeton, and uh, now every year in Princeton, the computer science department of, of Princeton is going to host an event to memorize this person, to show their respect to this great, great scientist. Without this guy, we, are, we probably will not use computers right now. We probably are still using our <clears throat> notebooks to do the calculation. Okay, 
So any other question for me? Okay, so if no more question, then that's the end of our lecture in this, in this course. And uh, so I hope that uh, you, you learned something from my, uh, my, my class, my, my teaching, and uh, I hope that you find this course worth your tuition, worth your investments, uh, both the money and the time. And uh, so I, I hope, most importantly, I hope that you, you can have a wonderful career. Uh, in the world of computer science or IT, this 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 field is 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 fabulous. So, so and that's it. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Professor. Oh, I have a question yeah. also. Okay. So I saw a poster of you and Professor Samantula. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're working on a cybersecurity. This summer, can you tell us about that? I think I, I briefly talked about that before. So it's basically a RU stat program. So we 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 hire students to to do research. Uh, so uh, so we pay a scholarship for for each participant. We pay around eight thousand dollars over the summer. Uh, so so but that one. The, the application deadline already ended. So it was the, the application, the due date was April 30th. So we cannot take any more applica new applications, but you are welcome to apply next year. We're going to have it again next year. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for the compliments. And uh, I, I, I enjoyed that the time with you too. Uh, so every every Tuesday evening, it's like, uh, it's, it's kind of like a meeting, a talk with friends for me. So yeah, thank you. Professor? Mm -hmm. Will your um youtube videos be available after the class is over yes so i'm going to upload it uh tonight so probably you can say it on on youtube this this lecture for this lecture you probably can say it around 10 p.m today or 11 p.m and the other the all the previous lectures are, are already there